Welcome back guys, we're back at it, still working on the XY. It's not XYs and kebabs today, because we're at my place. So, we're just continuing on with work on the guards. Uh, I've taken them home because we're going a little slow with the project, so I've taken some panels home just to work on in uh, whatever spare time I have, uh, which isn't much, but uh, it works out to be a little bit better. So. I'm just going through the process of cleaning these up, getting a little bit of the dents out and getting them ready to put into epoxy and then um, start the bodywork on them and then I can bring them back over to uh, Shad's house and continue the work. I'm not doing any work on the Cortina as you guys can probably see. It's chock-a-block full of stuff out from the shed. Uh, reason being we're doing a huge backyard renovation and um, it's a mud pit outside at the moment because of the rain and everything and yeah I'm not going to be doing any work on that anytime soon so I might as well continue on with friends projects and stuff like that so I'm just going to go through the process now of clean up every little thing there's lots of things that some guys might not think about when they go through this process but I'll show you what I do just to try and be as thorough as I can and yeah so one of the first things I like to do is scrape up these insides. Now the reason being they don't have a guard line unlike a modern day car. So anything that uh, the tyre grabs and uh, flicks up, you know, if it's um, fresh tar and stuff like that, it gets stuck onto the, gets stuck onto the car. So, excuse the noise. So I tend to just scrape them up other than the, uh, the factory um, deadening that they spray on it, see that? I don't like to disturb that, especially if there's no rust or anything um, showing under it, just leave it be. So I'll scrape up all these areas, get them as clean as I can. I'll probably wire wheel this, uh, it's a little, still a little bit flaky, so I'll do all that and treat that area. Um, but you want to get all this, all this little tar and stuff off, there's a little chunk, see there? stuck underneath. I'll get that out as well with a wire wheel um, just to make it nice and smooth and so when the epoxy gets reapplied it's not going over anything that might you know eventually fall off um, and leave that area bare with no coating so yeah Okay, the inside's been given a thorough clean um, and then I've given it a scuff just with some 240 grit um, little soft pads so I've done all that I'll give it a treatment later but just getting all those little rocks and stuff out uh, if you've got any panel bedding to do it'll give you a nice smooth surface on the, on the back of it uh, which helps a lot so you don't get any dimples coming up um, I'm just going to try and see if I can capture uh, little high spots that we've got see there, I don't know if you can see them they're just from stones, you know, hit, flicking up and, and hitting the top of the guard so I've got a little high spot there like that uh, I'm just going to knock them down wherever I see, there was a little bit of damage here and a little bit of filler um, I've got majority of that out, I'm just going to use the um, the body file on that and see if I can get it um, a little straighter just to see what well, it shows up, uh, but you can see where the Nikki, you know, continues on for quite a bit. Um, yeah, but it wasn't too bad. I got that out. Uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. Actually, very good, clean car. This XY. Very nice thing to work with at the moment. All right, let's do that.
Okay, so what I've done, I've just knocked down some of those um, plug welds I did earlier for the uh, moulding holes that were there. Um, they're all good now, they're down low enough that I can't feel a lump. So I've done all that. I'm just working um, this area here, which had the damage. So what I tend to do is try and panel beat as much as I can with the hammer and dolly, um, get areas down. And then with the easy beat, I love this little machine. Well, I love hate relationships sometimes. Um, I am getting slowly better at it. Um, I'll just yank out some of the dents. Um, they're a little hard to do from the back because you can't hold a dolly on this side and it's a little bit awkward. So easy beat makes it easy in that sense. So as you can see, I've file finished this side. Uh, as best I can, there's a little bit of a gouge there. That looks like that's from that damage that occurred at an uh, earlier stage in the XY's life. Um, and I'm slowly getting up the, the crest of it. And now I'll start doing the other side. So you can see there um, how bad that side is. And I want to eventually try and get it to that if I can. All right, let's keep going. It takes a little bit of time, uh, but this is the end result. So I'm really happy with that. All the shapes come back, fall finished and then sanded. And um, yeah, it's lovely. Really, really nice. I did the bottom of the uh, guard, it was damaged. Both, both of these guards have been damaged down the bottom here. I'm guessing going up and down garters or something or, you know, misjudging things, I would just assume. Um, and then there was some tiny little spots of, um, of rust. So I've just um, walled them over. They're all good to go. And that's turned out really nice too. It's got some nice shape to it. It's a little bit mangled. So that's good. The rest of the guard is excellent. So it's ready for paint stripper and epoxy. Alrighty, I've been hard at it. As you can see. I've ended up with a really good result. Uh, that's the rust patch that I've put in there. It's still a little bit pitted on the back, you know, in a couple of areas. So you've got to be really careful when you weld because, you know, in some spots it tends to try and blow through. Um, so the bottom area there took a little bit of um, extra finessing and um, ended up welding over the badge holes. They're all done. That bottom area is straight enough now for a skim. It's obviously not perfect, but as good as it's going to get for, for me. Got the dent out of the top here. That's all been body filed and um, then sanded and whatever needed to be done there. Same with the aerial mount hole. Um, it was a little bit buckled and you know, from people over tightening the aerial and stuff like that, it tends to pull towards a, you know, a particular way and they, and they buckle a little bit. So that's all good now. Nice and strong as well, because it was a little bit flimsy. And then this was the main damaged area. It had a big crease along there. So at some stage that had bent down like that. Um, they had just sort of yanked it and left it. Um, so I had to do a, quite a bit of panel beating there to get that as best I can. I had some old damage here. You can see where I've put the easy bead and it leaves its little marks. Uh, got that out as best I could. The bottom edge, get that nice and flat as well. That was good. And then the arc of this, so this sort of curve that I had here, um, either from the effect of all the hits or I'm thinking from this one 
it it was way too arc. So the the actual the actual height of it was too high. Um, you, I mean, I couldn't capture it no matter what with the camera. But when you put a straight edge on it, and I compared it to the other guard, uh, that one there, the right hand side, it was um, it was noticeable. You know, so what uh, the way I measure it is just put a straight edge on, and then see what your gaps are at either edge of the actual ruler of your straight edge so it's sort of you know as if you're balancing it there and seeing the gap the gap would have been maybe six to seven mil on each side and the other guard is only maybe three mil if that um, so yeah the only way I could figure out uh, to do that I mean this area here needed quite a bit of panel beating so I beat that area back into its its proper shape because there was uh, there was a lump there and then just with the easy beat just put a, a heap of shrinks you know slowly going working my way checking and then wherever it needed more continuing on so you can see it's sort of like a V um, but I got it in the end I'm really happy with it uh, I gave it a couple of goes with the body file and it's in it just needs a skim now it's actually excellent so really happy with that really happy that we were able to save this guard because initially we thought that it was stuffed because um, if you look at these guards they're actually different left to right so this is an XY guard don't get confused it's not an XW guard you can see the slot there that's XY this profile here it had a bit of bog there so you, I mean it's got the edge over it at the moment but it's still got you can still sort of see the edge of filler there so at some stage it had a hit here and this had come out a little bit um, there's a little bit of damage right so I removed the filler to see what was going on and I thought oh no they've pulled from here and they've yanked this profile out a bit because the profile here it's not as sharp as the other guard I'll just show you so you can see there it's sort of smooth it's not as deep here right it's a bit more rounded round from here rounds off and from there it rounds off so it's not as not as sharp and not as deep I thought oh no they've, they've ruined it they've pulled this out and we're gonna have to get another guard because I can't recreate that by panel beating you know it's way too hard for me so I'll show you on this other guard see that look how sharp that is see that profile there it's it really the right angle on that on that profile there on that swage is really sharp so let's see if you can see that and then here it's much deeper see that much deeper than the other side so what ended up happening we had all Ford day here um, a couple of weeks back the day before all Ford day here all the time is the swap meet so I told Shad I said go hunting and see if you can find an uh, XY left hand guard because we had looked on marketplace and a heap of other places and we found a few went and checked it out and they were they were way worse than this either with rust or with damage or something there was something that was stopping us from buying them they were fucked right so he went early in the morning had a look there was only one one left hand side front guard there was a couple of rights only one left hand side he bought it anyway this thing, when he brought it home, it was a pile of shit. An absolute pile of shit. I thought, oh no, what's he done? What's he done? He said, there was the only one there. I said, it doesn't mean you have to get it. Anyway, the good thing about that guard was we compared that blinker bucket area and it's exactly the same as this one. It's smoother. It's not like the right-hand side. It's, the profile isn't sharp like a right angle. It sort of swoops down a bit more, you know? So... At least we discovered that that's how they are. That's how they are. They didn't make them exactly the same. Whatever the tooling was back in the day or whatever, they weren't exactly the same. So we thought, fuck it, okay, that's good. That, it's good and it's bad. Okay, he spent 350 bucks on a guard that ends up having to go in the bin or whatever. But we discovered that this guard is good, it's usable, and we can continue on with it. So that was great. So that's what we've done. We did continue on with this guard. Then we made sure that the blinker sat really well here to see what you know if it had a gap or whatever. 
we closed up the gap so if you look down the side here when you put the blinker on this gap is now absolutely perfect and then we went to all four day had a look at the other guards and the blinker gaps <laughs> and they were all over the place even the really nice cars had a gap there you know so and like the gap was bigger left to right and they were all over the place either people don't care about that or just because they know that that's how they are then you accept it it's one of those things that gets up my nose things like that you know so i know that yeah that's how they are that's how they are but i try my best to make them better all those little wear areas meet and stuff like that try and get it as perfect as you can so we spent a bit of time with that beat that edge out a bit more so that it does meet the blinker absolutely perfectly it does now and we did the other side as well so they're absolutely perfect so they'll probably be the best ones going around but that's the sort of thing that i like to to get right you know so what what the designer was really going for but what the tooling let him down on you know that's that's the sort of thing anyway i'm just going to continue with these guards now i'm just going to get get them ready to do the back sides in epoxy and um and then i'm going to paint strip the uh the outside and get ready for epoxy on that as well all right let's keep going After two coats of paint stripper, this is what we're left with. So, a few little bits and pieces, basically, where it doesn't quite capture everything. Have a look here, guys. So this is filler. There was a little bit of filler work here at the front. Uh, at some stage, you can see the rust under it. This is why I always epoxy everything and then do my filler work on top. Another little thing to, to show here, this is a tiny little stone chip um from the back hitting up and it cracked the paint look at the surface rust under it just that tiny little spot those all things that you've got to get rid of before you do all your epoxy work you know this is your basis you've got to get this stage as best you can Prepped, ready to go, deoxidined, everything, the whole lot. Bare metal. So all good to go. I'll just show you my little setup that I've got here. So what I've done, I take the window out. I've made a board the same size, and I've bought these um, industrial style extraction fans on eBay. Uh, pretty good. I think they were like 70 bucks each something like that and you just run them to power so just turn them on and they suck out all the fumes work pretty good 
and it allows me to see a lot better than having all the overspray while I'm painting. Okay, let's get to it. Now we'll go back to Shad's house, uh, we'll put them on the car. I think just before I take them to Shad's house, I'll give them a quick skim of body filler and sand back, just mainly over the areas where I've done some welding and stuff like that, just to give it a rough sort of go over before we start doing you know, the, the sort of shaping of things. So I'll do that here um, and then take them over to Shad's house and then I'll probably grab a few more panels and bring them home, I'm just a little bit quicker when I'm taking panels here and doing the work here. Um, some of the shell has to be continued over there, obviously, because the car's over there. So I think on the next visit, I might continue the rust repairs that were on that um, quarter panel, and on the other side, I'll just get them done, and then um, continue on with some of the other sort of metal work before we start going completely into bodywork. And that, guys, is another episode done on the XY, XYs and kebabs. We didn't have any kebabs this time, none at all. So hopefully on the next one, we'll have kebabs back and some edible kebabs as well. But please, subscribe. If you like the channel, please subscribe. It does help out a lot. I'm nearly at that thousand mark, and once I pass that thousand mark, it starts getting really serious. So please help out and subscribe if you do like the channel. Also, feedback. If I can get some feedback of people, what do you want to see more of? What style of video you want to see more of? If you like some of the old stuff, if you like some of the under construction stuff, um, please go through my old videos and if you, if you see anything that you like and go, oh yeah, go back to that sort of style of things, then please let me know in the comments. Thanks guys, catch you on the next one.